In this video, I propel you to go deeper into Christ, to have a greater dimension of intimacy with Him. Enjoy and please subscribe. Father, you just glorify the awesome name I came. Just being able to be in your presence where you are. We know you are omnipresent, God, but Father, the ability through the torn veil of the blood of Yeshua that we can go in and physically be with you, Father, where we were taught that we can't see you, yet we are beginning to walk with you, Father. We're beginning to see you, touch you, Father. There's realms and dimensions, kingdoms that's opening up to the ecclesia that goes beyond what we can even fathom in the natural. Lord, we want to honor you and praise you for that, Father. I thank you, my King, that you are a God that is about to realign your people, a God that is about to propel us deeper into you and what we've ever thought possible. Father, a Enoch generation is about to arise where we will literally look out of the kingdom of heaven and we'll begin to understand the power that Noah, Enoch had. Father, just even looking at that generation, yes. Enoch being their great-grandfather of Enoch, Father, that, that of, 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 of uh, <clears throat> yes. Look at Noah, Father, the grandson of Enoch, Father, when he opened his eyes, he's his spirit, full of the glory and the fire of Yahweh, was so intense that it lit up the room. And the very first thing that the baby just born said was he praised God. It freaked his father out so much that he ran away. <laughs> father, there's a generation. There's a generation that's going to go so deep. There's a generation that's going to walk with you and operate out of Mount Zion. It's going to understand and walk in the 12 laws of Zion. It's going to understand and walk in the 12 laws of Jerusalem. Father, understand the fullness of the glory that comes with the engagement into who you are. Father, we are going to begin to understand the 24 elders, the thrones that they have on their heads. Father, that each one of those thrones, the dimension we can go into, each one of what needs to be laid down is a place that we can be erected into, Father. I thank you for your angels, Father. You were the ones in the room with us tonight. Yes. Yes. The ones on the outside. Yes. The friends of the roaring angel over the city. Yes. I know there's more than one, Father. We want to honor them. Yes, we honor them. Thank you, Lord. Cloud yes. of witnesses. Seven spirits. Yes, Father. We glorify and magnify you, my King. The city is beginning to be touched. The city is beginning to align and change. Father, your glory is everywhere. Your sons and your daughters have gone in and fetched the fullness of who you are. And that image that reflects you has been walking in the earth. And it is changing and aligning things. Father, we have awoken. We have grown and we glorify you for it, my King. You are majestic. We step into the yard, we step into the hay, step into the valve and the shed in the hay. Step into the fullness of who you are, my king. We love you, Yeshua. Let's us night with deep revelations of this. Let's have, a, let's have understanding. You are majestic. Larry, let there be light. How are you guys doing? Awesome. Awesome. Marvelous. You guys, Great work. You guys ready for the conference this weekend? I say yes. conference, but really it's a gathering of the, the, the Spurs School. Um, it's going to be fun. I really believe it's going to be fun. Um, 
It's not going to be any different than what we do here. Um, we are going to break up into smaller groups um, to do a little bit of an engagement, to be caught up together. Um, so there will be some of you that will facilitate the group just to take them into the heavens. I don't know how many people are going to come on Facebook. There's uh, been a great response towards the conference. Um, so we'll see how many will actually end up coming. But um, it doesn't really matter. We're going to have um, lunch together. We're going to probably have snacks in between and all the breaks that we take. And um, we're going to try and do at least two sessions at a time. So that means you need to either take something to keep awake or just keep awake. Because it's, it's going to be intense. And of course, after lunch, you know what happens to the V8, right? Yeah. <laughs> that happens at night as well. Okay, but I'm very excited to announce that uh, one of my spiritual brothers, uh, my older brother, I say old not because he's old, he's more mature, he's worked with the Father in this for many years, he's awesome, um, Mike Barnett, if you haven't met him or, or um, engaged with him, he's a really excited guy, he's a very powerful apostle, a prophet of the nations, he's done many things, um, he's, he's very, he's, I wouldn't say his speciality, because of course he doesn't have a speciality, no one, we don't have specialities, but one of the things he does at a, a level that I, that I really enjoy is his engagement with the angels, and how he is engaged with angels, so what he's going to do for an hour or so, he's going to tell us about the, the, the angelic canopy and realm that he's engaged with, yes. right. so it's yes. really exciting, I would urge you to come, we'll start at 10, if you're going to bring a food or something with, come a little bit earlier so we can bring, get it in the kitchen. I don't know um, if there's going to be enough um, warm, you know, warm trays to keep all food warm. I don't know how much food there's going to be. I don't even know if there's going to be enough food. I just know that uh, those who are coming are supposed to bring something. Um, we're just going to share whatever it is. So I, don't, I can't really tell you what it's going to be. We're going to keep the worship the same. Uh, Margie's not going to do all the worship sessions. We do have one of my other sons um, that will also do some of the worship. Um, so just, just come and uh, have a good time with us. Awesome. And I want to remind you guys, uh, Wednesday night is uh, now a Facebook um, school, Spirit School Facebook. <laughs> Help me, Jesus. Um, but that's, that's basically where I want to answer questions. So what I would urge you to do is inbox me on Facebook the questions you have so that I can answer them. Of course, there's people all over the world, um, New Zealand, Australia, South Africa, Germany, Holland, Belgium, um, even Indonesia and all the countries in the world that's on Facebook is watching these videos and they want to know what it's all about. I get stupid right. questions that I don't really want to answer, and then I get really intense questions, and I have people arguing over these questions, which is yeah, yeah. just yeah. weird, <laughs> but it's okay, it doesn't matter. Um, so I would urge you that have been in a school for a while to go and maybe just ask some questions in my inbox. I put it on um, my notes so that I can teach on it. I'll probably take two or three questions before I, you know, and then I'll answer that over a half an hour period. So because it's a, it's a decision myself and my family has made, to stop the, the Wednesday school in Albany and to have more of a um, family night, it's only for half an hour. So we're not going to be answering a lot of questions, it's just going to be short and sweet and I'm going to try and answer the questions as, as good as possible. Yeah. I think last week went already very well, yes. it was very nice, I was basically on the scrolls, um, some, of where, some ask, uh, questions was asked on uh, oils, yeah. what specific oil, mm -hmm. marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> but the essential oil is not a drug, right? Yeah. right. We understand this is logic. You can't smoke it. Okay, so of course the purity in that drug is phenomenal. Um, I haven't bought one yet just simply because it's quite expensive. Uh, and, and I don't want to buy it at Walmart, but you can buy it at Walmart. Um, but that was basic questions like that. The next week, this week coming will be a little bit under Lake of Fire. And the river of fire and the difference between the two, um, the reference of what the Father is doing in the earth regarding fire right now. Um, but we'll see whatever is coming up. What, I, what I've been wanting to do, and I, I really have to tell you that this is sudden. I have other revelations that I would rather share with you guys. But since um, Mike came into this room and Council came into another meeting, um, which was the physical uh, manifestations of one of these seven spirits, which I don't know of that's ever happened. Mm. Amen. So we were here, and uh, I believe that, that, that my friend, um, 
Leon brought um, might in with him. Mm. And might is a very powerful thing. I'm going to be teaching on might tonight. Might, mm. might tonight. Yes. Um, just yes. because I've been engaging him for the last couple of weeks. And it's life changing. In, uh, in, um, in Mississippi Picayune, we were busy doing it. And the, 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 the pastor that goes to that church in that day engaged with, with, with council. And in that, the, the, the engagement or the, the soaking session, council physically came walking into the door. Now, there's only seven spirits, and they are not omnipresent. So to have one of them physically appear or come into a meeting is a phenomenal honor. It's just the Father saying, look, I want my people to begin to understand and see how serious I am. Because the seven spirits walk to and fro in the earth, seeking sons and daughters that's mature and ready. Amen. So it's exciting that, that Mike was here. Now, now we're going to go into the detail of might, but, but might is really the, the one that arises in us, the sense of miracles, yes. the sense of power and authority and giving us revelation regarding the things that happens in the spirit, the realms that we can operate out of and that which the Father wants us to have revelation of. Now, I, I have to say, I know that there's theology out there that still teaches um, that, that it is the sevenfold spirit of Yahweh. Yeah. Now, I understand that, and I, 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 I'm not even disagreeing with it, because, of course, everything comes out of Yahweh, yeah. right? Everything comes out of Him and is created by Him and through Him. Yeah. But the Bible does tell us that there are seven spirits at yeah. the throne. Yes. Right. Now, let me just remind you that Holy Spirit... It's not some secondary God that has to sit on the floor. Right? Holy Spirit's on the throne. That's right. That's right. So the seven spirits is by the throne, and we understand that even, even the spirit of the Lord is one of the seven spirits. Yes. We just need to understand that. Now, I don't want to go too much into detail regarding the seven spirits because we have taught on this before, but in Galatians it says, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all, but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the Father. Yes. So you need to understand something. There's a dimension in the earth that we walk in that we are taught and trained and equipped by our leaders, right. by our apostles, by our prophets, by our uh, uh, Sunday school teachers, help us, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> our, 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 our um, seminary, cemetery <laughs> teachers. That's right. right so, so there's a time in our lives where we have to be trained and equipped, right? And I believe that many of us are in that time now. But there has to be an elevation of that training. Of course, the elevation takes place when we begin to understand that I no longer have to be a bound to the earth, but I can begin to walk in the heavens. Amen. I can begin to operate out of the mount of Zion, where I can operate out of the mountain of the Lord. Amen. Once I begin to operate there and I grow into my sonship, this is when the Father begins to take me on a journey where I engage with the seven spirits. And each one of these seven spirits is assigned to train and equip me on how to be a king in my Father's kingdom. Amen. And of course, the elevation from walking with the seven spirits will be that the Father himself will have a company of people that he will teach, which will be a, level, a revelation and a dimension of insight beyond what we can even fathom right now. That's right. But it is for this generation, so we have to be ready for it. Amen. Yes. Amen. How are you guys doing? Yes. You look at Esther. She had was given seven handmaidens. Yes. But to do what with? To teach her how to be a queen. That's right. Right? Um, and a matter of fact, if you are adopted in a Jewish culture, uh, what happens is your date of birth is clean, s slate, uh, slate clean. Does yes. that make sense? Wiped clean, slate clean. It, it's wiped out. Yes. So your date of adoption becomes your date of birth. Yes. And at the, the, the adoption, there's seven witnesses right. regarding this adoption. And it's the exact same thing that happens in the kingdom of heaven. The, the seven spirits is the witnesses to what has been accomplished with you in the spirit and what, has been, uh, what you have been equipped for so that the Father can begin to elevate you in the levels that you need to go into. Yes. You know, he says, and we've discussed this, he says his desire for us is to run the courts. 
His desire for us is to run the houses of, of Yahweh in the kingdom of heaven. He wants us to be coherent. But how can we be coherent if we have no clue what our kingdom and the kingdom of Yahweh is all about? That's right. right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So there's obviously a time of growth that has to take place. I remember a friend of mine having a dream after his father passed away, and uh, Tony. And um, what he, I believe it was Tony. And, and what he saw in this dream is his father couldn't come to him when he went into the heavens to meet with him because he was busy being trained. Mm. Oh, wow. so, so the teaching that tells you you're going to be perfect when you die is a lie. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Because if that's true, then why don't why would I be scaffolding along in life if I can just die, and then I'm perfect? Because death is not my savior. That's right. That's why there has to be a process. There's a process of growth, and this is what the seven spirits does. And and I, I don't want to talk too much about this, but you have to engage with them in the full capacity, and that's where your imagination comes in. That's where we go right back to seeing where the understanding of who you are in the spirit has to relate to what you see when you go into the spirit realm. You know, I remember it was on Monday afternoon, I was just, uh, my wife's gone to the gym, I was getting, getting ready, uh, showered, get myself ready, and I was just sitting in, the, in, in, a, in, a, in a room where my kids were not, <laughs> otherwise you can't do anything, it's like a glitch of a noise and rattle and craziness. But I was sitting in, in, in a room where I believe it was just a comfortable, nice place for me to, to have it and be at peace. And as I was going in the spirit, uh, the awareness that my soul had was in many different places. That my spirit was doing many different things, many different things at once. Because I know that we don't always understand this, but in the kingdom of heaven I can be in many places at the same yes. time. As a matter of fact, my spirit was doing some things in the earth at the same time that I was in the kingdom of heaven. And the Father just kind of showed me all the things that I've been engaging into. One of the things I've been doing is I've been engaging with, with uh, um, one of my favorite characters, one of my favorite character witnesses, um, Joshua. And he literally yes. gave me a mantle. Yes. And it was just Woo. exciting to sit there and just finding all of this just taking place. Matter of fact, he started speaking word over me. Yes. And, um, and while he was doing this, my spirit was relating to what is, what is happening with, with, my, with my father in the heavens as we walked in the secret places in the heavens. Yes. I need you to understand, it's, it's what you see that's going to grow you. Yes. Now, it's not going to overshadow the word, but it's going to overshadow your perception of the word. Yes. Right? We, we have misunderstood the word because we take it out of context. Right? You can... That, that sounds nice. You can, you can literally have the word mean whatever you want to if you take it out of context. But last night I had a young man, while I was teaching on frequency and teaching on the kingdom of heaven, I released uh, my, my tongue, my spirit language, which is not me trying to prophesy or me saying something to the congregation that needs interpretation. And of course this is an ecclesia meeting. There's no unbelievers here. Okay, we are a meeting of the Ecclesia, I do not need to interpret this, that I spoke. But he insisted that I interpret it, and when I of course said I'm not going to, he got angry and left. But he only stood outside, because we carried on with the teaching, I had, it in my, I had him in my heart. I love him, I don't want him to leave, I wanted him to stay, so that I can teach him. Yes. Afterwards he came back in, I prayed over him, and the reason he felt like that is because first of all he didn't speak in tongues. Wow. He didn't understand tongues, but he read the scripture that says that you have to interpret it, but it's out of context. So I prayed with him, he started speaking in tongues. There's a whole different life about to, to take place in his life, right? So we cannot just engage in the word like we used to. Right? The Father wants you to go into the kingdom of heaven and have him overshadow you with revelation and insight. Yes. And these seven spirits, and I've said it before, the seven spirits is a spiral walk yes. upwards, so you never stay at the same level. So if I start with the spirit of the Lord and I go right around and I come back to the spirit of the Lord, I'm going to be at a different level, but I'm going to walk with him again. Amen. Matter of fact, every time I have teached on the seven spirits, I have teached it at a different level because I have been walking with the spirits at a different level. Yes. Now the yes. idea of the seven spirits is that just you engage with them, that you bind them to you, right. mm -hmm. 
for 21 days. This is your responsibility. When you engage with one of the seven spirits, you have to walk with them for a minimum of 27, of 20, 21 days. Because that's yes. how you break a, pat, uh, a pattern of thought. Yes. Okay? Okay, so what we're going to do is, I'm going to, I'm going to start with, um, well, we already did wisdom last week, am I right? Uh, no, we did fear, fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord. Now, I, I was not going to teach on this. Obviously, I said to you guys, we've done this before. I've had some other things, but I just really feel in my heart that we need to go intensely under the seven spirits. That's just for a time. Yes. Uh, and see what's going to happen. I don't know. And I would urge you to engage with them as much and as hard as you possibly can. Now, for those of you who don't know, there's seven spirits, right? It comes out of Isaiah 11 from verse 2. You have the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of uh, fear of the Lord, and the spirit of might. Did I say it? Did I mess one out? Anyway, you can go read it in Isaiah 2. Wisdom knowledge. Okay, the spirit of, the spirit, the spirit of might... Is, um, is actually in charge of the court of war. Yes. He's the chancellor in the court of war, and his presence is known. Mm -hmm. a matter of fact, as far as I can understand, and what I've seen in the spirit, and I could be wrong, but, but one of my mentors, Ian Clayton, uh, I have to be honest, he looks a lot like might in the spirit. <laughs> yes. Now, might is a block, a block of, 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 of might. <laughs> Power. Uh, it's just massive. I mean, when he comes walking in, you know he's there. It's not like wisdom. Uh, it's not like understanding or counsel. Might is a presence yes. that literally takes over. Yes. And so when you engage with might, you will know it. You have an intense desire to pray for the sick. You have an intense, you have an intense desire to speak out into the atmosphere, healing for those in the atmosphere or in the room near you. As a matter of fact, you don't even have to lay hands on people. When Mike's in the room, you can just speak your breath into the atmosphere and it could really change. Yes. 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 On, um, on Monday, it could have been earlier in the day, I'm not too sure exactly when it happened, but I was taken to South Africa, my hometown. My hometown is Western Area. It sounds like the west of us. Of the little town is called Western Area. Like seriously. And it's a mine town. Um, you've got Western Area, Carltonville, and in Western Area you've got smaller mine towns where all the mines actually are like mm -hmm. Fentus Post, uh, Glen Harvey, Waterpan, and then you've got the bigger towns, uh, Randfontein, um, Krugersdorp. So Western Area has uh, everyone that lives there works on the mines, and of course they're successive demonic entities. If you go into the town immediately, you can feel the depression, oppression, the suppression. People die of cancer and all kinds of weird diseases all the time. And I, I mean, my, my family, my sister still stays there with her family. And I remember there was a, a hill next to one of the mines that I used to go to. And I would just pray there for hours. And matter of fact, the Lord actually led me into a, a, a valley where someone uh, took, I don't know how many days, but he uh, took rocks and packed out the name of Jesus. In this valley, and the Lord led me there, and that became my place where I would pray and just spend time with the Lord. And I've taken many of my friends there, but I remember there was a, a cross right on the edge where someone that uh, that hang hang gliding died. I mean, it's not the nicest cross, you know, it's someone's bad memory. But I remember finding myself standing right on that rock where this cross was, mm -hmm. and um, my spirit man was opened up. And the full glory of Yahweh was released in a scream. But now I remind you that your spirit man doesn't have a breath that needs to be breathed in. And doesn't have a breath that needs to be breathed out. So when I screamed and blew the breath out, it, could, it went on for, for at least a half an hour. Just, ah, with no breath. It didn't, it didn't end up. It was just going into the city. I could see the flames and the fire and the fullness of His presence just going in. Bringing change and alignment. And I'll be going back again to see what has happened and how the Father has aligned it. But I believe this is the type of things that might lead us into. Yes. See, the yes. intercession that we are starting to do as the Ecclesia is different than what we used to do. Yes. 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 I'm not saying that what we used to do wasn't powerful. But there's a higher dimension of what we used to do. So now it is more powerful. Yes. It has a higher, deeper place in the heart of the Father. Yes. 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 Yes.
Okay, so might is there to reveal us for position. I remind you that the seven spirits places you in Yahweh. It is always about your position in Christ. And for you to be reminded that the Father has called you to a place of authority in Him. A place where you rest and move and have your being in Him. It's really all about being in Him. It's that, that Hebrew culture that takes the beginning back to the end. Or the end back to the beginning. Yeah. So my destiny is to be back in Him. Yes. Yes. Right? Like in the very, very beginning of the Bible it says, um, In the beginning, yes. the word in, in is my destiny. Yeah. Right. Yes. And of course, the beginning it was not a chronological time. It wasn't a statement of time. It was a statement of person. The person of Yahweh. In the beginning. Everything was in Him. Right? Yes. right? Yeah. He is the beginning. Yeah. But He has no beginning. Hmm. That's it's yeah, interesting, no right? <laughs> <laughs> but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Yeah. And you shall be witness in uh, Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Now I need you to understand something. The Father's desire for you is to have the understanding of the fullness of Holy Spirit, and when you are full with Holy Spirit, what it brings, what it pours out onto you, because it opens up your heartbeat for you to begin to walk with the seven spirits. Amen. Because each one of the seven spirits is obviously related to Yahweh because they are part of the Ben Shatan. Yes. Yes. Right? It's the Father, Son, Holy Spirit on the throne yes. with the seven spirits. It makes ten. Yes. Yes. Which equals governance. Yes. Governance. So the Father wants you to understand that when you start walking with might, you will have an increased desire to share your faith. Yes. You will have an increased desire to share that which you've already experienced in testimony. And I remind you the word testimony means to replicate. Yes. So whatever you share, whatever experience you've had, can be repl re replicated in your speech of it. Yes. Spirit of Might teaches us how to exercise the supernatural realm of God to reveal the power of God. Yes. So Mike teaches us how to exercise the supernatural realm of God. Now you have to understand something. We as the Ecclesia have not touched the supernatural realm yet. That's right. We have mostly only do the things that Yeshua has done. Mm. And most of us in this room have not done any of that. Mm. Okay, well, uh, Yeshua raised the dead. He cleansed the lepers. Lepers. Mm. Leper, lepers. No, he didn't clean the lepers. He didn't work in a zoo. <laughs> he, he healed the sick, cast out demons. But that's the 5% of his ministry we could see. The 95% of his ministry that was never spoken of, that we couldn't see in the natural, is the stuff that he really wants us to get into. That's right. Because that is the bringing into the earth the kingdom of Yahweh and the understanding of the alignment that the sons of Yahweh has to bring and do in the earth. I said this before, he restored me with his blood. If he did not just restore me with his blood, then why do I have to restore the earth? Why is all creation waiting for the sons of God? Because he, created, he restored me and I have to, as the ecclesia, together we have to realign the earth. Okay, if you are new to this meeting and you wonder what these people are doing, they are trading into Revelation. Okay, so instead of saying Amen, when you like what you say, you take some of your finances and you trade into that Revelation. Okay, it's like walking through the shop and seeing what you like and buying it. Okay, there's no amount allocated to it, but it's for you to sow into that. Okay. Uh, not all my meetings do that, but it is a, it's a really powerful tool it for is. you to receive revelation. It's fun. Yes. It works. Yes. Ephesians 6 tells us, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Yes. See, it's might that brings you to a place of absolute strength. Yes. Where you begin to understand the power that you have. In Christ, the fullness of the glory that the Father wants to reveal in and through you in the earth. So that you can begin to understand who you are. 
Yes, See, I have to understand these realms. I have to exercise um, the, the fullness of my understanding of these realms that we operate in. Because the only understanding we have is earth. Yes. But there's, there's realms in the earth and there's, there's dimensions in the earth that we can go into. Yes. Right? And then we've got one kingdom. There's multiple kingdoms. Yes. Matter of fact, we have already established at least seven kingdoms and there could be more. Yes. Our Father is an infinite God. Yes. But according to our Bible study, we have the kingdom of God, which is on the inside of me. We have, we have the kingdom of heaven. It's in the kingdom of heaven that there's multiple amounts of kingdoms. As a matter of yes. fact, one of those kingdoms you will find when you go into Yahweh. Yes. There's another kingdom. If you go into the mountain of the Lord, on top of the mountain of the Lord, there is Mount Zion. There's another kingdom. Yes. They talk about the kingdom of perfection, the kingdom of, of, heaven, of the heaven of heavens, the heaven itself. Yeah. We need to understand. It's might that teaches us how to engage and how to understand yeah. all these levels, all these dimensions, all these realms that we can go into. Yeah. And so you also need to remind yourself that when you engage with might or any one of the seven spirits or any angelic being within the kingdom of heaven, you are not taking from worship unto the Father. And I've said this many times, this is the best explanation I've ever heard, and it's Justin Abraham said it. He said, if you go eat at a restaurant, yes. and you enjoy the food, you don't say thank you to the waiter, right? And even if you do say thank you to the waiter, the glory still goes to the chef. That's right. That's right. No matter who you say thank you to at the point that you're enjoying the food, the key is that it's the chef that made it. And everything that takes place in that restaurant uh, regarding the food and delicious and how wonderful it was brings glory to the chef. Yes. So whoever and whatever you engage in the kingdom of heaven brings glory to the Father. Yes. 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 And you will very quickly find that every one of the seven spirits, they desire only but to propel you deeper into revelation, deeper into your position as a son of the Most High yes. so that you can grow and become what He's destined you to be. Right? And of course, Mike wants to reveal the power of God to you. See, we do not understand the power of God. You know, when I stood on this mountain as a little, little hill, I remember many times that I have gone there to pray. I remember this one specific time uh, I was driving, I drove past and I had to wait in, in, in a traffic jam because there was a massive car accident. So there was helicopters landing and as I eventually got to drive past, there was a, um, a body lying and they covered the body with a white sheet. So the person was dead. So the father, in my heart I felt the father telling me to raise him from the dead. But I just got born again and the only thing I could raise from, from the dead was myself. You know, the old man. <laughs> oh so I fought it and I fought it and I never did. Oh so I remember the Monday I'm going back to find my car because my car was kind of broken and I took it in. It wasn't broken, I had a little bit of an accident so they were fixing the dents or they were welding something, I can't remember. And the guy tells me, I have to show you this accident that happened on this specific road. And I said, I am sure I was waiting there. So he tells me about this accident. The, the head of this body was gone for two weeks. They couldn't find it. So I would have loved <laughs> to see that recreative miracle Woo! that, yes, that would have happened there if that actually eventually happened because he didn't have a head. My God. Wow. I don't know how that would have been. But walking with might, now we have never walked with might, so we can't even begin to express this. I believe men like Smith Wigglesworth uh, walk with a dimension of might, uh, a small yes. portion. I even believe that men, uh, people like um, Todd Bentley and um, Todd White are yes. walking with might in a dimension, in a, in a, in a portion. They're seeing phenomenal miracles. I mean, uh, David Hogan has raised hundreds from the dead. Yes. You know, and he's, he's doing things that, that, that the natural cannot perceive. He's making such a noise that the presidency is calling him to operate and work with them. Yes. Yes. You know, because yes. there's something about walking with might that changes things around you. Yes. Yes. But of course, this is stuff in the natural. Hallelujah. The Father's ministry so desperately wants the ecclesia to begin to walk in the things that's not seen. Yes. 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 Because it's really, and I don't just, it's, it's really subconscious. I don't think yeah. we do it consciously. I'm but sick. subconsciously, it's such a bragging thing. And I'm not saying that these men walk around saying how many I've raised from the dead and the healings have taken place. I know they're not boasting in themselves. But it's just like a subconscious thing that we're in the miracles and the natural things that we see we want to boast in. Yes. 
that we boast in Christ and that's a good thing. But it is the things unseen, the things not known, that yes. gives you the greater dimension of glory that the Father wants to pour into you. Yes. You know, Yeshua is standing before the Father and He says, Now glorify me as I've glorified you. Yes. There was nobody there. But I bet you there was three men there that wouldn't leave his sight. And he was probably thinking to himself, guys, I'm just trying to be alone yeah." <laughs> but they refused to leave. They never left his sight. Amen. Unless he said, okay, I'm going to go now, and three of you are going to stay here. Yes. And I believe that he's, he's longing for people like that. Yes. As a matter of fact, I believe that we are it. Yes. Yes. A generation that's going to go that deep. A generation that is not going to leave his sight. And of course, because we are not going to leave his sight, we're going to begin to understand the power we have in the spirit realm. When I put my foot down, how many of you understand that place belongs to me? Yes. Yes. But, but how many of you understand if I walk in the streets, that place does not belong to me? Yes. If I walk into the shop and I say in my heart that belongs to me and I start taking stuff, I shall have get us arrested. <laughs> right, but in the spirit where no one can see me, I walk into atmospheres, into places, into realms, into different kingdoms, into nations, and I claim what I walk on with the fullness of the glory of Yahweh to what He is oh. destined. And so that when my foot touches the earth, consumed with His glory, it brings alignment. Yes. Yes. But we can't see it. Oh. And for me to even testify about it, what does the rest of the world think I am? Yes. <laughs> That's probably why I'm 300 pounds. <laughs> because I don't care what they think. And if they want to make their thoughts verbal to me, they shall have be issues. <laughs> Am I refined? No. Shall I slap with you? Yes. <laughs> yes. Smith Wigglesworth. Oh my goodness. Let's punch the old lady in her stomach yes. so that the cancer can come out of her mouth. Yes. That makes a lot of sense, right? But that takes faith that we can't even fathom. Right. <laughs> but you know, he, he, he was just such an awesome man. And you know, let me just also tell you guys that there's people in the earth today engaging with him because he is one of the cloud of witnesses and he is appearing in meetings all over the nations. Yes, yes. Aligning us with that dimension that he walked in. And of course, it's a baton that he wants to carry on to this generation. It's an understanding he wants us to have. You know, there's testimonies of Smith Wigglesworth just praying before a meeting. Yes. Where everybody that wants to come into the meeting with him will be in the prayer meeting. And by the time he's finished, people are crawling out of the meeting. Yes. They can't handle the presence that He brings. Because let me tell you something, when your spirit lives in the kingdom of heaven, and some of that dimension, that, that, that intimacy, that, that presence of the Father attached to your spirit, and you bring that into this atmosphere, it changes lives. As a matter of fact, it can kill you. Yes. You know, my spiritual father, Ashley McGlue, can share testimonies in, in Belgium, where the glory of the Father was so intense that people would run to the altar and physically die. Right. But well, they would have to raise them from the dead. <laughs> yes. Because our bodies are not designed for His glory. Amen. Yes. Yes. That's right. But my, my body can be glorified. Yes. yes. Right. Now let me also remind you, and I said this before last week, I said it last week, but if I take the seven colors of the rainbow, which is allocated to each one of the seven spirits, and if I turn the, the rainbow colors at 2,800 rests per minute, it turns white. White. And that's our Father's desire for us to turn into white light. Yes. That's why we walk through that process of change, where we go deeper and deeper and deeper into the things. That's why Yeshua, by the time of His baptism to the time of His transfiguration, um, walked with the seven spirits. And by the time He got there, He was fully matured and He was transparent. Yes. Yes. Enlightened. Yes. Now, I remind yourself that Moses was the only man ever in the history of creation that took his dead body into heaven. Yes. Yes. There's no other man ever done that. And of course, Elijah never died. Right. And he didn't, he didn't never die because he was one of those lucky guys <laughs> that skipped death. No, he was a prophet of the Most High, an oracle, a friend of Yahweh, like Enoch. Yes. So in the time of his, his um, 
going up or he's, or he's shifting into the kingdom. He's gone through the process of walking with the seven spirits, the enlightenment of the full transfiguration where the DNA of your mother and your father is seared in you. How are you guys doing? Awesome. See, the, uh, the mic wants to teach you about the dominion you have in God. Of course, he wants to teach you the dominion of God. And to remind yourself that the Father has given you a portion of His dominion to run the earth with. Mm -hmm. And he said that in Genesis 2, I think Genesis yeah, 2, 26, am I right? Mm -hmm. Anybody? <laughs> yes, you're right. What are you saying? <laughs> Genesis 1, 26. See, guys, I'm not paying any attention. You're all fired. <laughs> yes. Genesis, Genesis 1, 26. He says, for we have created men according to our image. Yes. And we've given them dominion and authority over all creation. Yes, all creation. So he didn't give us full dominion, only all dominion we need to run the earth. Yes. Now the earth includes the planets and the universe. Yes. And the alignment of it. Now let me tell you something. We have been taught in the church that you cannot go in to the, 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 the atmosphere outside of earth. Because first of all, that will be spirit travel. Travel. I'm inventing words here as my tongue gets knotted. It'll be spirit travel and that will be demonic because, you know, our God's not powerful enough to have my spirit travel into different realms and dimensions. Only Satan can do that and Satanists. And of course, New Ages, they can do it. But, but Christians, their God's not powerful enough to have them do that. Why do we believe this poop? <laughs> I mean, it's just crazy, right? right? It's obviously and just logically a perversion of an original. Right. And so now that we are restored back into Him, we take back what's ours right. and we purify right. it and align Bring it. it back. Right? So Bring when we back. begin to understand the dominion that He's given us, and, and let me tell you something, and you'll see it as soon as you go out of the atmosphere of the earth. Now, I know that it sounds stupid and crazy, so I don't talk about it all, the mu all as much, but going into the atmosphere of, of the universe is a whole different place in the spirit. There's mostly demonic entities out there because we've never gone. So these dragons and giants have occupied space in the heavens that has prevented so much coming into the church and into the earth, and we did not know. We are dealing with thousand principalities and rulers of the darkness instead of going higher. So the hidden ones have not been seen, therefore we bind and rebuke and we come against and we cut off, but we have no power. Nothing really changes. Because we haven't dealt with the root. Once we deal with the root, all of a sudden everything stops. I mean, those of you who have worked in the, the quarters for the last couple of years, have you seen a change? I mean, it's insane that change has taken place. Why? A, a giant's been slain. Yes. That's right. Matter of fact, giants and dragons within the yes. city has been taken out yes. in the spirit. Myself yes. and Gracie walked on the carcass yes. of a dragon in Bourbon Street just the yes. other night. Yes. Experiencing the death. So much so when there was a new strip club that opened, I said in my heart, it can't be. Amen. When we got to that strip club where the guy told me they just opened three months ago, it was shut down. Yes. It was closed with some broken windows. Because the Father said to me that they will not be able to align any new clubs. Amen. Nothing new. As a matter of fact, what will start opening is um, coffee shops. You know, if, if you find yourself at Saints and Sinners, listen to me guys, there's a church meeting in there every week. The owner of that club is born again, spirit filled Christian. The Christians, is, it's the hub that operates out of that church, yes. out of that, that place. I don't even know. I mean, we, I've been in there before, and it was weird. We, we did a, an outreach where the, the drunk and the already half slurring comes in, and they get a reading from you. Now, I'm not going to read their palms, right? We prophesy over them. And it blows them away. We've got someone prophesying over the people. We've got someone interpreting their dreams. And by the time they are done with the dream interpretations, they get prayed over, delivered, and set free. Yes. They walk out there sober. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that is happening in the middle of Bourbon Street. Yes. Come on now. Come on now. And let me tell you something. When, when this happened, when I stepped into this uh, St. Louis Cathedral, and the Father showed me this vortex 
of demonic entities that just has the ability to come in and out as they will because of this giant that was sitting in the space, just ruling over the mountain and that which is meant to come into the city. When I eliminated, when, when, when the Father showed me through might how to go into the court of war, how to deal with this thing, how to literally slit him open and take out all the diamonds and gold and rubies and revelation and insight and, and the glory that was meant to come into the ecclesia out of him and store it up in my mountain in the heavens and trade for this nation, everything changed. Yeah. Uh, when I shared this on the videos, people started telling me how easy it has become to go into, this, uh, into the quarters. Yes. Oh, wow. Now, is that the last and the only? No, there's so much more. Because let me tell you something, this is one evil little city, but it's changing. That's right. If you listen to, to Dean Sansuri, if you listen to some of these, these men that's got an intense passion for the city, they are at work. They are at work uniting the sons of Yahweh. It's not about church. It's about engaging and, and, and it's, 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 it's might that aligns us. Showing us the dominion that we have, the power that we carry. Wow. Now, when I take the riches that was in, a, in the valley of a giant or the valley of a dragon, and I take it into my mountain, and I go trade for a nation regarding the things that were stolen from it, it is restored. Yes. Now, I'm going to understand, it's not restored instantly. It's a process of restoration because we have to begin to change the way we think as well. Because we still have the mentality of how bad the city is. We still have the mentality of the things that we struggled with in the past. Right. But we have to start getting past the way we used to think regarding this city. Yes. Yes. Because if it's changing it, then we have to see the change. Yes. But that also means we have to find ourselves outside of the city in the spirit. Yes. Because if you're in something, you can't see what's going on. Yes. Have you ever known that? Yes. It's only when you step out of a place. Yeah. Why do you think so many South Africans, Africans, Europeans comes into America to minister, to preach, to bring a revelation to you? Yes. Because we are outside. We can see what needs to change. Yes. Why would God send people to America? That's right. Because you are the leading nation. Yes. You are the ones that the Father has chosen to carry the fullness of His glory into yes. all the earth. Yes. Let me tell you, you brought, the, 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 you brought salvation to Africa. But yes. not the kingdom. Yes. Matter of fact, America's got a gospel that doesn't exist. Yes. Uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's no such thing. How many of you know that? Don't look at me with that tone. <laughs> there's, a, there's a gospel of the kingdom that Jesus preached, but not a gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's the good news, not turn or burn. <laughs> I, I can vomit up something if I hear these words. If you die tonight, do you know where you go? You will go to hell. Where you will burn for eternity. Do you want to give your life to Jesus? Hell yeah. Who's Jesus again? Because I don't want to go burn in hell for eternity. I'll accept him right now. Either that or, excuse me, I'm in hell as we speak, bro. What are you talking about? Right. They The gospel is good news. Good news. But we're not, we're not very good carriers of the good news because we're depressed. And because we have always come against Satan face to face, we've always been attacked and under him. Because we believe that there's a second heaven, heaven that we have to break through to get to the third. So we literally say, Satan is above me, and I'm under him. But that's not what the Bible tells me. Matter of fact, the Bible tells me that he has right only to my toe jam. He's my footstool. My foot poop. Now, I know that I'm a little bit vulgar in my explanation, but I need you to see it. And of course, the Bible tells me that he's disarmed. Right? He's got no arms. He's defeated. He's got no feet. He's a flesh devil that is um, 7,000 years old, maybe more. He's dying daily. The Bible even goes as far as to tell us when we eventually see him, we will go and say this. What? Is that him that made nations fall? See, we have given him the power he has today. And as we grow, we're slowly taking back because we understand dominion. Uh, a dominion is not those little green things in Despicable Me. 
dominion is something you have to take over a nation. And it's the alignment of who you are that brings you to that place. <laughs> I just watched it this weekend, just three. So I'm like, yeah, those are also dominions or minions. But that's not what it means. <laughs> How are you guys doing? <laughs> Okay, he wants to also teach us how to exercise in the world, in the earth, and in the spirit realm around us. How to understand and how to exercise his dominion. Yes. How yes. to know who we are in every realm and every kingdom we go into. And to remind yourself that his desire is to have you co with him. Yes. He wants you to work with him. Matter of fact, he wants you to do most of what stuff that needs to be done. Yes. That's right. yes. Because he's God. He's the king. And I don't know what the Queen does in England, but I can guarantee you it's not all that much. <laughs> and first of all, there's so much protocol that we can't even begin to fathom. Oh, yeah. She's got so many slaves, so many, so many sons and daughters that, that works with and for and has certain work and jobs that they need to do. She really just say, okay, that, 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 and that, that needs to be done. She might assign a couple of papers, but that's it. That's right. Same with the President. Yeah. We think it's the President's fault when things happen. I guarantee you, he doesn't make the final decision. That's right. They take one man and they give him the final uh, say. No. That's why we are the body of Christ. And the body of Christ makes multiple amounts of people. That's right. Yes, yes. But there's one head. One person that agrees with what we are aligning in the earth. That destiny scroll that you agreed to before you were sent into the earth. That's right. Right? The Father has called you to specific things. He's called yeah. you sp to specific things. Everyone in this room has got a different calling, a different character, a way that you need to do different yeah. things in different yeah. ways. Yeah. You can't do the things I do. And if you do do the things that I do, you'll do it differently. Yes. In a different personality, with a different character, a different way. Yes. Right? Because we are all different people on purpose. <laughs> yes. Of course, the Father's desire for us is to operate together as one, to understand how our body is supposed to work. So he really wants us to understand how to exercise this dominion in the world, in the earth, and in the spirit realm around us. Now, I want to talk mainly now about the spirit realm that we always went into face to face. And let me tell you, I've said this many times, but all we've really done was excited the demonic entities. Because they come out looking for a fight. And what did we do for 500 years? We gave it to him, to them. Instead of doing what the Bible says, agree with your accuser immediately. We come and say, well, I bind you. Matter of fact, we will wake up in the morning and the very first thing we say, um, maybe after good morning Jesus, is I bind you, Satan. I bind this spirit, I bind that spirit. You find, you invent and create some spirits to bind, but you will bind whatever moves. And it might not even move. You might just see it in, 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 in your, your cataract. <laughs> but you will bind something, right? And before we know it, all we've really done was um, get the spirits and the demonic entities in that realm excited. So what do they do? They begin to surround us. That's why the church is always under attack. How does that work? The gates of heaven will not prevail? Oh, oh, oh wait, sorry. The Bible says the gates of hell will not prevail. So the way we have done things up to this point, there must be a high dimension of truth to it. And of course we understand now that that's the, court, the courts and the mobile court. And dealing from out of the kingdom of heaven with the things, agreeing with your accuser. It nullifies him and takes from him right. instead of adding to him. Yes, hallelujah. How are you guys doing? Good. 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 Good stuff. God has not given us a spirit of fear or and timidity, but of power, love, and self discipline. So when we begin to understand who we are, begin to understand the power that Yahweh has given us to walk in. Everything changes. You know, I see myself in the spirit more than what I've ever seen myself in the spirit. As a matter of fact, I can, I can explain to you exactly what my spirit looks like. I, I've seen Holy Spirit, and I know that some of you have seen and experienced Holy Spirit as well. But the fact that we can now see, the fact that we can now walk as a spirit being in the earth, not as a human being. Because as a human being, I struggle with these high heels I'm wearing. <laughs> <laughs> I weigh 300 pounds 
you know, and, and <laughs> my body doesn't always want to work with me. You know, when I lie down on the floor, I feel the 300 pounds pressing down on the ground. You know, I, I, I stand up and I can feel that there's, there's uh, something that needs to change in the line of my body. Yes, but my spirit has no limitations. Yes. No, I'm not saying that my body is never going to change because I'm eating of him and drinking of him daily. Yes. Yes. My body is aligning with his DNA. There's a phenomenal change. I'm 43 years old and I have never felt as strong as what I am now. Now, I like that saying because that's what uh, Caleb said. He said to Moses, I am 80 years old, but I feel stronger today than what I did when I was 40. Yes. I want my mountain, right? So the Father is really calling a generation that's going to begin to understand who we are in the spirit. Because Caleb wasn't really so much talking about a natural mountain. He was talking about a spiritual uh, dimension that he wants to step into and begin to align in the earth. Because he knows what he was called to. Right? I mean, he spends intense time with Joshua that, that spent face-to-face time in the tent with Yahweh. With Moses, just face-to-face communication with the true living God. Beyond what we can fathom, right? Yes. And so he's just calling us to understand that when you start walking with the seven spirits, might is one of these beings that you want to engage. It's not worship unto another creature. It's not worship unto another spirit. And it's the engagement, it's engagement. I engage with people all the time. I don't worship them. As a matter of fact, I'm intimate with my wife, but I don't worship her. And so worship is something you do purposefully and on purpose. Yes. It's not something you accidentally, oops, I didn't mean to, but I worshiped you. No. No, it's something you go out to do yes, on purpose. Yes, yes. And so we need to understand that when I step into the kingdom of heaven and I engage with these heavenly beings, I'm not worshiping them, I'm engaging with them, and they are there to train and equip and align me. Yes. And, and, and Mike, especially because he is the chancellor in the court of war, wants to align you with warfare and teach you how to war, not like yes. we used to. Yes. 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 Now also understand that we're just moving from one uh, dimension of truth to a higher dimension of truth. So I'm not saying that the previous generation was wrong. No. I'm just saying that now that there's a higher dimension of truth available, then why would I continue to do what I used to do if there's a better way? That's right. There's a more powerful way that hasn't been revealed, that was always there but just wasn't opened. Mm. And if you listen to Enoch, if you listen even to uh, John in Revelations, how the, some of what was given then wasn't for that generation, it was for a generation to come. Yes, that's right. And what generation is that? The last generation yes. which will be us. That's right. And let me also remind you when you, when you run, um, what do you call that sport when you hand over the baton? Uh, relay. 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 The, the, the best Correct. runs lost. <laughs> and of course, the others, they don't just stop and go sit down and start eating their fries. <laughs> they continue to cheer on. Right? As soon as I hand you the pattern, I cheer you on. And so does the next, and so does the next. Then they run across the field to the end where they start cheering on the last yes. one running. Yes. That's why as we engage with Mike, we'll begin to see how the cloud of witnesses wants to engage with us. I can't tell you how much fun I had with Joshua. In the kingdom of heaven. As a matter of fact, I have engaged with, with many men in the kingdom of heaven that changed my life. But every time I go in there, I go in there with Yeshua because my focus is Jesus Christ. Yes. And his desire for me is to engage with the heavens. This is my brothers and my sisters. Yes. These are men and women that give me battens and, and mandates. Yes. They yes. give me uh, mantles and they want to bless and increase. You know, every time you walk through somebody in the kingdom of heaven, you drink of their wine yes. and you walk yes. through their engagements and revelations and insights. That's what the high priest did. When he walked through the veil, every time he walked through the veil, he walked oh, through every generation of high priests that was uh, sewn their garments to the wall. It's an exciting time, and I would urge you over the next 21 days. Uh, uh, guys, remind yourself, we're going to be teaching, I'm going to be doing the seven spirits over the next couple of weeks. And uh, we have done it before, and I know that, that it, you might say, well, why are we doing it again? I don't know. 
Um, and the only reason God repeats Himself is because we didn't understand or listen the first time. That's right. Okay, and of course, I have been teaching, I, I taught this so many times that every time I teach it, it comes from a different level. Yes. So I would urge you to engage into it. If you don't understand what I'm saying tonight, go listen to some of the other teachings on the seven spirits um, of a year ago, two years ago. And you'll find that it's completely different. Yeah. But I would urge you to bind this one of the seven spirits, especially now might. Last yeah. week we were spoken, was talking about the first spirit of the fear of the Lord. Now, the spirit of the fear of the Lord is the key to every other spirit that you want yes. to walk with. Yes. Because it leads yeah. you to awe and wonder of who he yes. is. That's right. Mm -hmm. And of course, might is to train you because this is a time of warfare. But right. not the warfare that we came out of. Right. It's not the age of war, it's the age of Zion. Yeah. So we operate from out of the Zion out of Zion in the heavens. Mm -hmm and legislate the kingdom of heaven, Zoe life, into the earth. It's a form of war, but it's different. It's not war as we know it. <laughs> you know, we, we have to understand something. When God says, That's you! Life ends. You know, so you ever think to yourself, Why do we go through this stuff? Why doesn't he just go, Stop messing with my kids. <laughs> Why? Because he's given us dominion. Right. He wants us to understand his power. Yeah. Yeah. He wants us to understand who we are in him. He wants us to align things and bring things back into place. Right. So he's given us all these tools that we can work with, but the church doesn't want to teach it because you might not tithe anymore. Mm. <laughs> or you might grow up so much that you leave the church, and then what? Who's going to pay the bills? <laughs> they, all my leaders have left because they mature now. And they started in their own churches. Now I'm in competition. Oh no. See, that's not the heart of a father. That's a mother. And I have no problem with mothers. Mothers are the most awesome creatures on the planet. But a mother mothers. That's a jealous person. A mother just wants to gather and, oh my little putushi, you fell and stumped your toe. You made a poo poo in your diaper. Oh, come now, me hug and cuddle you. Yeah. The father is a little bit of a different ball game. Seriously, you crap in your pants again? <laughs> uh, it's enough now. If this happens again, I'm going to smack your bottom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't swim, let's push you in the water. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll save you just before you drown, but you need to learn. You need to learn right now. Mommy's freaking out. <laughs> That's exactly what's happened in the church. <laughs> Why? Because the pastor is not supposed to be running the church. It's the apostles and the prophets that's meant to be running the church. That's right. The mother mothers, the apostolic is the paternal, not the maternal. We need the maternal in the beginning, but then we need the paternal to take over. Yes. We need a generation that will father, and we are that generation. That's why I'm not urging you to leave your church. Matter of fact, I urge you to stay in your church. I urge you to have the 95% of the things Yeshua did in the spirit, you need to start doing in your church in the spirit, where no one knows, no one sees it. But they'll feel the change as you begin to legislate. Yes. Hallelujah. Because then fathering comes from a place which is in the kingdom of heaven. And we legislate that into the earth. Yes. It stands. Father, we love you. We praise you. We glorify your awesome name. Father, we step into you. We step into you. And I want, I want you to find yourself with your imagination active, your, your in, enlightenment of your understanding, uh, activated so you can see and step in and begin to experience might in its full capacity as he teaches you, as he takes you into that room in the heavens and he shows and directs you, he takes you through the kingdom of heaven and teaches you who you are in the court, who you need to be, how you need to war, how does the court of angels work, how does the, this work, how, does that, how do you need to do that, how do you understand the realms, how do you operate out of the realms, how do you walk in the dominion of God in the earth, how do you understand these things, revelation being poured into you as you engage. So Father, I pray and ask you right now that everyone in this room tonight will open up their hearts hearts and begin to engage deeper and deeper and deeper into you, my King. And what we've experienced up to this point is just not enough. No matter where you come from, no matter what teachings you're under, I will come out of a phenomenal church. Most of you in this, class, in this room probably come out of a phenomenal church with great pastors and great leaders. Maybe, maybe not. But tonight you were taught something that will propel you to a new place. What are you going to do with it? This is, they were the stepping stones for us to go higher. Yes. Now that there's a higher dimension available, let us, the ecclesia, the church, the sons, the daughters of the Most High, go into it and take what's ours. Yes. Take back what the enemy has in hand. Yes. He cannot have it. Yes. 
Yes, right. right. We can't have a day in my year. That's right. It's ours. He cannot have a sport. He cannot have a name. He can have nothing. That's right. Six does not belong to him. Snake does not belong to him. Goat does not belong to him. Father, we just want to live out of your heartbeat for the nation, for the city, for the people. We love you, my king. We glorify you. Thank you. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen.